God bless you. God bless you, my friends and family, Facebook friends and family. I want to say to you, happy Thanksgiving morning. This is Chief Apostle Curtis Allen coming to you this Thanksgiving morning. I want to wish all of you a beautiful Thanksgiving day. I'm not planning on being before long. I do want to encourage you with a word from the Lord to encourage you. And I thank God for all of you, you beautiful people. God bless you, Apostle Jackson. Amen. I do have a word from the Lord today for his people and all of my friends. Amen. Out there. This is to encourage you. So I got to get back, go back into the kitchen to help my chocolate chip get dinner prepared. She's preparing Thanksgiving dinner, and I got to get back in there to help her. <laughs> I had already cooked the hen. I cooked the hen last night, and I got to finish on this morning. But and but God is so good. I thank God for Jesus. I have a word to encourage you. This is you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You want to be free? Get with the Word of God. Go get your Bibles. You won't. I know. Well, I know you can't go get your Bibles today. I know some of y'all cooking and everything. So just listen to the Word. Look here. We're gonna go to the book of Exodus. And uh, we'll go to that Exodus in the uh, 14 chapter and uh, beginning at the 10th verse. Amen. I want to encourage you today in this Thanksgiving day, Thanksgiving morning. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid, and the children of Israel uh, cried out unto the Lord. Amen. And they said, Moses, and they said, Moses, said unto Moses, Behold, because thou there was not enough grace in Egypt, thou take us away to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou built thou with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Now look here. God had delivered his children, the children of Israel. They had been in captivity, been in bondage for 400 some years. Bondage to the enemy. Pharaoh, my God, had them in captivity, suffering, being burdened down, being misused, being abused, but they cried out to God. And one day, our God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, heard their prayer, sent Moses to deliver them. Now, I'm not going to go into all the full details, all the details of I'm not, I'm a child, I'm a child, I know it by, thank you, Jesus. With the help of the Lord, I just want to encourage you. Look at here, in captivity, 400 years. 400 years suffering, crying, and being abused by the enemy, being slaves. They were slaves, my God. But God heard their prayer. Say some God, if we cry out to God, he will hear and answer your prayer. Answer, amen. God is a good God, and he's worthy of all praise. And look, and God, have the, uh, he's bringing them out of Egypt. Amen. Pharaoh. Um, it's been marching behind them. My God, getting ready to go try to take them back. When God deliver you out of captivity, the saints of God, my God, the devil, he wants you back. The enemy wants you back. He wants you to, he wants you to be back in captivity. He wants you to be back in bondage. My bondage to sin. Sin is captivity. Being, living in sin, that's living in captivity, living in bondage. But God, in his mercy, I thank God. Thanksgiving Day, I thank God for delivering me from out of my sins. Hallelujah. Thank God for delivering you. Ah, you'll see. We don't, we're not in captivity no more. We've been delivered. We've been set free, set free, set free from bondage, set free from sin. We don't have to live in sin no more. Well, that's something to be thankful for. 
Thank you, Jesus, for setting us free. Hallelujah. And they, look, and then after when the enemy, Pharaoh army, marching behind them, the children of Israel looking back and seeing the enemy coming after them. The enemy is behind you. The enemy is coming after you. But you got to keep on walking, walking by faith, walking by faith, keep on walking by faith. I don't care what the enemy said. I don't care what the enemy is doing. Keep on walking by faith. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, let me slow down. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm not going to be long. <laughs> this thing is good to me, y'all. Look at here. Long, they say, look, long verse. And they said unto Moses, Behold, thou hast, was there no graves in Egypt? Hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Therefore hast thou dwelt with us, with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt. In other words, that my God, that, that you don't have those negative, negative people always talking negative. You can't do this. You ain't perfect. You got to sin. No, you do not. It was that the children of Israel wasn't enough, enough grace in Egypt. We could have died in Egypt. Why you want to bring us out in the wilderness to die? We could have died back there. But thank be to God. Was God deliver you? You not to die. No Egypt, no more. Hallelujah. You don't have to die in Egypt. Why? Because you don't have to go back. You ain't going back in no Egypt. I am not going back in no Egypt. You not going back in no Egypt. To die now. We're going to die in the promised land. <laughs> Woo. Let me go. Let me hold up this thing. Because I got to get ready to help Sister Alice some more. Hallelujah. Look, look. 12 verse. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt? Look, trying to discourage Moses, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptian, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptian than that we should die in the wilderness. They tell me, now, we told you, Moses, from Jump Street, Moses, we told you when we were back there in Egypt, before we was delivered, leave us alone. We, before God, when God sent you to deliver us out of Egypt, we told you right then, before we was delivered, leave us alone. My God. God, my God, that devil something else. He wants you to stay in captivity. He wants you to stay bound. He wants you to live in bondage. We know we are free. We are free. We are free. Thank God he set us free. Ah, praise God. Just a little bit more. Bear with me this Thanksgiving morning. Thanksgiving morning. Hallelujah. Look at here. Now look. And look. 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear, not, fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you, show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them in it again no more ever. Be encouraged. That enemy that's come against you, come against you on your job, come against you in your home. Come against you in the neighborhood, that enemy that's come against you. My God, God, so you ain't gonna see him no more. God, look, look, God will fight for you. Don't you worry about your enemies. I worked 27 years for the government. I worked 27 years for Memphis Housing Authority. I had many farmers that tried to fight me, tried to get me, uh, suspend me for without and all this kind of stuff. But thank be to God, those same farmers that tried to fire me, I saw them walk out the door. I saw them getting fired. Instead of walk, me walking out the door, they walked out the door. Trying to get rid of the man of God. They try to get rid of you on your job. But you stand still. Stand still and trust in God like I did. I trusted in God for 27 years. For the government job. My God, those four, I had 10 farmers. 10. 10 of them. Out of, and I had four, four, three pretty good farmers. But the rest of the 10, all 10 of them tried to find me. They suspended me without pay. But I got my money back. Why? God trusted in God. You got to go through. But when you go through, it's going to be all right. God going to deliver you, sister. He going to deliver you, brother. Hang on in there. Hallelujah. Look at here. And Moses fear. Look, and Moses said to them, to, to the people, fear not. 
Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. Stand still. You have to stand still sometimes. And see. And shut your mouth. Don't talk. Sometimes some of y'all get yourself fired on the job because you talk too much. Stop talking so much and start praying. Stop praying. Stop talking so much and start a praying. Calling on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Look, look. It says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see them again no more forever. Look, 14. For the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. God is going to fight for you, sister. Brother, God is going to fight for you, brother. Hold on, saints of God, you may be going through on your jobs. Oh, no. Oh, my God. You may be going through in your home. My God, your husband acting up. The children's acting up. Everybody's acting up. But you stand still. You hold your peace. You let that devil keep on talking and arguing and fussing and trying to fight. You stand still and see the salvation of God. But now, I'm not saying to stay in a, a rebuser, abusive relationship. Relationship now, I'm not, I'm not saying that. If you're in a relationship, young lady, and your husband is fighting you, he abusing you, he's physical abuse, uh, abusing you, whooping you. My God, you yes, get out of there before you get killed. I don't teach no woman to stay in a abusive relationship. You got a violent husband and he's uh, abusive to you and your children. He's fighting you, busting your eye, busting your mouth. Just because you going to church to serve the Lord, coming home drunk. My God, he's coming home drunk and looking at you and hating you because you're a child of God. You don't have to stay in that abusive relationship. A Pastor, Chief Apostle Curtis Allen is telling you, get out of there. Get out of that bad situation. God would deliver you out of there. But something you to do. Some turning so many times, folks want God to do this for them. God to do that for them. It's something you got to do. God give you sense to get out of that abusive relationship. My God, you better leave before he kill you. You better leave. You got a cheating husband. My God, help me, Holy Ghost. This is the Holy Ghost coming out. This is the holiness coming out. You got a, a unfaithful a, a husband cheating on you, drinking and smoking dope and not paying the bills. You getting about to get put out your house, getting ready to get put out your apartments. Got to go back and stay with your mama. Got to go back and stay with your daddy. Get out of that relationship and get you a job and Take care of your children for yourself. You, woman, you get your education so you'll be able to take care of yourself. Take care of your children. You don't have to stay in that relationship with some man just because he's paying the bill. Get up and get yourself a job. Get your education and get your job to take, take, take care of yourself and your children. And get out of that stuff. He's whooping your children. He's beating your children. He's being you, my God, and bringing you home diseases and all this stuff about I'm out there fooling around with other women and giving you diseases and you stand there. Get out of there. Get out of there. God would do, He's delivering you today. What I'm saying today, you that hear me, women, and, and they're going through that abusive relationship. A chief apostle Allen, according to the word of God, said you don't have to take it. You don't have to take that. Leave that, leave him before, before he kill you. You're going to end up being dead. Your children are going to end up without a mother. These men is killing these women. My God, because they're trying to leave. But you, you have to sneak away. And you have to wait till he go to work. You have to wait till that abusive husband go to work. While he's going to work, pack your stuff. Get out of there. Go somewhere to a safe haven. Go to a safe place. Oh, let me get back into the word of God. I'm sorry. Y'all forgive me. That's the Holy Ghost. I'm warning some woman out there. You better get out of that relationship. You better be thank God. I thank God. God for giving me the authority and the power to, to bring it out of my soul and spirit to even on this Thanksgiving day, you be ought to be thankful for hearing this word of God saying you free. You, young woman, you are free. Get out of that junk. Get out of that abusive relationship. Get out of that, my God, that man is hating you because you're saved and you got the Holy Ghost and he hates you. My God, Woo, you better get out. 
Let's go back to the word. Look at here. In the Lord, 14, in the Lord, the Lord, this is Moses talking to the children of Israel. For the Lord shall fight for you, and you, sh you shall, what, hold your peace. Yeah, God will fight for you, and you hold your peace. What do you mean, hold your peace? That, that's a time we have to, you have to be quiet. If that man, if at home, he drunk, he doped up, he anger, he got bitterness, he got hatred. You no, yeah, hold your peace. Don't you say nothing. Don't you don't you tell him you're gonna leave him. I'm leaving you. Don't you say that. You tell a man you're gonna leave, he's gonna kill you. You never get out of the house. Don't you tell hold your peace. Stand still. See God, the salvation of God. Wisdom will tell you hold your peace. God will tell you hold your peace. Don't argue back. Don't argue on. Because the more you argue back, you can't you can't talk to no fool. You can't talk to nobody on drugs. You can't talk to nobody addicted to cocaine, all that other stuff. You, man, you can't talk to nobody. You just hold your peace. Let him talk. But soon he go to work. God, oh my God, let him go to work. Honey, pack your clothes. Get your children thin. Go to a safe haven. They got safe havens in Memphis, Tennessee. They got safe haven for women to go to until they can find them shelters, play to stay for safety. Get out of there. Look at here. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore cry, wherefore cries thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that, that they go forward. Look, you need to go forward. Get out of there, go forward. But lift thou up the rod and scratch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry land, ground through the midst of the sea. Look at here. And and behold, and I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And look, and I will let me, I will let me, my honor, I get my honor, I will get my honor upon the Pharaoh and upon the host, his host, upon the chariots and upon his horses. God said, I'm going to get my glory. I'm going to get my honor out of that enemy. I'm going to let Pharaoh know who I am. I'm going to let the enemy know who I am. God will let the enemy know who you are by you standing on the faith of God, by you being in obedience to God, you just stand still. God said, I'm going to get my glory. I'm going to deliver you out of that junk sister. I'm going to deliver you out of that abusive relationship. I'm going to be, I'll deliver you out of being whooped every weekend or being whooped every other night or being whooped by that man, eyes bloody, mouth busted out. I'm going to deliver you, sister. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. But you got to be obedient is and obey the word of God. Obey what the man of God telling you to do. Obey the word. Woo! Look at here. 18. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me the honor among Pharaoh upon his chariot and upon his horsemen. 19. And the angel, look at here. Oh, you about to look at it. Look, 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 look. I've been to read some powerful. Here comes some powerful stuff. Hey, uh, amen. God bless you, precious. God bless you, sweetness. I have adopted you as my daughter, precious. Precious, sweetness. I have adopted you as my spiritual daughter. I'm praying for you, precious. God bless you. And, amen. Look at here. And this goes for all of us. Look at here. Woo! Help me, Holy Ghost. I'll give you a little. Here, I'm going to, let's go a little. little. The Lord, here you go. 19. 19. 19 verse, in the angels of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went forth before their face and stood behind them. God is the angel. Read it for yourself. It said the angel of God. Do you know who the angel of the Lord was in the Old Testament? The angel of the Lord, my God, was Jesus. When you hear in the Bible, the angel of the Lord is Jesus. Jesus. And then here's the angel of the Lord. Well, you want to put Jesus, I say it with, I believe with Jesus. Because what? It, it said that angel, of, uh, it was in the clouds. That angel was in the clouds. And that clouds 
was to guide the children by night. It was a pillow, it's a pillow cloud, and by night it was fire. And it lit up the way it was dark. And God knew, my God, He used that pillar of fire, that cloud, by, ooh, that cloud, pillar fire, and it lit up. And they would be able to mo move around because it was at night. But thank be to God. But that angel went behind that pillar. And the angel, in other words, the angel stood between the enemy and Israel. God, Jesus. Today, he's standing between you and the devil. The devil can't do no harm as long as that angel is standing behind between the between you, you in the front, Israel's was in the front, the enemy was in the back, the devil was in the back, God angel went in the back of the cloud to die to protect Israel. <laughs> you got an angel. I got an angel. The angel of the Lord in this. Woo, I feel the whole happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving Day y'all. Happy Thanksgiving. God has delivered. He delivered you right now, young lady. Oh my God. You want a husband? God would send you a husband. You wait on him. A man that fans a wife. A man that fans a wife. Fans a good thing. You wait till he fans you. Don't go looking for him. So many of y'all women have messed up at the wrong husband. Why? Because you went looking for him. Still him going looking for you. But when a man Fan is a wife. He fan is a good thing. But all you got to do, young lady, is just be in the right place at the right time. And I believe the right place is in the house of God. That's what we were taught. In the house of God. Now, I know you got a lot of devils in the house of God, too. So you better be careful and talk to your pastor. Talk there's a lot of devils going in the house of God now. So you still got to be careful who you're talking to. Let your pastor talk to you and talk to him. Have some counseling. Find out that he's saved. All these men in church, a whole bunch of them in these big old churches, and some of them is sissies. They gay, they, and they there, and they are, and you mess around, hook up with a gay man, a bisexual. You better watch, you better pray, you better wait till God send you the right man. Oh, let me get back into the word. Look at here. 20. And it came, and look, and it came, and look, the angel said, it came between the camp of the Egyptian and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud of dark, in darkness to them. And it gave light by night. It was a night time to those who, so that uh, it, it came it, it near to the others. It came and near to them. I'm going to, I'm excited. Let me take my time. Let me read this right. It was it was a cloud in darkness to them, but it gave light by night to those, so that uh, the one came not near the other all night. In other words, it simply said that verse. It simply said it was that cloud. It was a pillar of fire to Israel. Amen. It was a light to them, but it was darkness to the enemy. How they can see, but Israel can see. God, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. He shine light. And we got that light on the inside of us. God bless you, Sister Anna Thomas. God bless your heart. God pray for me. Keep on praying for me, y'all. Hallelujah. Look at here. And Moses stretched out his hands over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to look, look to go back by the strong east wind all that night, and look it made the sea dry, and the waters was what divided. God divided that sea, that they called it the Red Sea, the Dead Sea, whatever. But God took his. Ooh, he said, one scripture said, the nostril of God blew in the, in the body of that sea. And look, and the children of Israel, 22, and the children of Israel went into the midst of the, they went in the midst of the sea upon the dry land, and the waters were a wall unto them on, the, look, look, on their right hand and on their left. Hallelujah. Look, in the, I'm going to close it. I'm going to close. 
So y'all go cook some more of that turkey, because I'm cooking. I'm having, I cooked the hen last night. I got some more cooking to do. I'm having my chocolate chip. I'm having to cook dinner today. <laughs> I'm a cook too. I help her do everything. She helped me. I help her. All right. Look, twenty-three. And the Egyptians perch a, a pursue and went after them in the midst of the sea. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. 20, Twenty-four. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch in the morning. In the morning. In the morning, it's something about in the morning. The script, I like quote the scripture. I can find them for I'm a quote. Can I quote them? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy come in the morning. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Joy come in the morning. Nighttime. It was nighttime when God delivered the children out of captivity. It was nighttime when they went to that Red Sea. It was at night and they was weeping but weeping they endure for a night but joy. Joy come in the morning. The Bible said and it came to pass that in the morning watch. The Lord looked on the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of the uh, fire and of the cloud and the tr you know, in trouble in the whole horse of the, the house of the Egyptians. They said, God, the Lord looked through that cloud. Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Jesus looked through that cloud and looked at those old Egyptians. Come in after God's people. My God, if you just stand still, let God fight your battle. Let God do for you. He can do for you what no man can do for you. He can do for you for what no woman can do for you. My God, he's God all by himself. God looked through the pillar of cloud. God, he said, God, the Lord did it. Jesus. Woo, I feel good today. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Thank y'all. Happy Thanksgiving to you. <laughs> just a little, just a little bit, few more, few more. Look. Uh, okay. Well, I'm the 24th again, and it came to pass that in the morning, watch the Lord look unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and the cl of cloud and trouble. The whole host of the Egyptians, they were trouble. Let me tell you something. The enemy get trouble. He get trouble. When he see that you're being blessed, when he see that God is blessing you, my God, that enemy get upset. The enemy get jealous of you, young lady. My God, you keep on writing your books. You keep on letting the Lord inspire you to write books and books to encourage women, books to encourage the peoples of God. Keep on encouraging. Keep on writing those good books, sister. Keep on writing those books. Keep on doing movies, young man, to know how to do movies. Keep on doing something. The enemy, they upset with you. They get trouble when they see you being blessed. The enemy get mad. That's why they don't look at you right. They are jealous of you. They are jealous of you. Why? Because they see the blessings of God in your church. Right in your church home. Those sisters get jealous of you, young lady. Young men, the brothers get jealous of you. When they see the anointing of God is on your life, they get jealous of you. But my God, you keep on obeying God. Keep on preaching the word. Keep on preaching. Holiness. Holiness is right. Holiness is right. Leviticus 11, 44, I am the Lord thou God. Thou shalt sanctify thyself and be holy, for I am holy. I am holy. So therefore you sanctify yourself. It's something you got to do. Sometimes folks look for God to do everything, but it's something you got to do. You got to present your body a living sacrifice. Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy, that means sisters too. I beseech you, Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God that you present your body a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable servant and come out I'm going to close my Bible now I'm going to close living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable servant and be not conformed to this world but rather be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that's the thing about you got to let your mind be transformed that's what's wrong with a lot of people today in the church the, the church is looking like the world and the world is looking like
the church. The church say, my sister, I'm keep on saying, young ladies, old ladies too, you ought to look like you're sanctified. You ought to have no dress on so tight that they can see your panty legs. You ought to look sanctified. Be holy. Don't try to go around tempting folks with your tight stuff though. If you save, you don't have all that tight stuff. You're going to look modest. You're going to dress modest appearing. Paul said to those women, be modest. Dress modest appearing. It's already, it's all good to show that you're, you, you're a nice young lady. You're beautiful. And you, you know you got a, you know you got a nice body. But don't, don't try to show, reveal everything you got. Don't try to reveal it. That's it. They'll see you with looking, looking modest. They'll see your shape, even dressing modest. Those brothers, same brothers, I see your shape. But they got if a man got to go by your figure to be able to, you got to get a man, you got to catch a man just for your figure, you messed up anyway. Because he's looking at your body. He's lusting at your body. He And, and preachers, you preacher women's out there, call yourself preaching and all. You ought to stop getting up there on the floor with tight, these old tight pants. I seen a woman the other day with these tight I don't know what the skin pants, I guess they call them, up there with tight in the pe in the presence of the peoples of God. We got to look, Michael, we got to look saved. Straight back over the brothers too. We got to be saved. We got to look the part. I ain't got no bit have these these suits, some of the suits they got on that, got the, the pants so tight. Pants real tight. I ain't know where that jump. I don't care what kind of <laughs> what kind of style it may be. I'm a dress. D. I'm have on pants that gonna be fit me properly. Hallelujah! Tell God thank you. Tell Lord thank you. Jesus love you. Chief Apostle Curtis Allen love you. You know God been good to me. I wanted. Uh, I don't know if I'd be able to do this. But God, I'm thanking God for his goodness. I'm thanking God for his mercy. Because look here. I want to show y'all something. It, it, this is my uh, uh, tablet. I got shot May uh, uh, 2015. Y'all can see that the bullet went through this ear. This is my ear. You can see the bullet went through my ear, top ear. And hit me in the back of the head right there. The bullet, my God, the gains was out in front of my house. I was living out in the hood in Owens Mount. I was in Owens Mount. And I was outside, went out there to cut my yard. And I blanked out. Didn't know what was going on. But the gangs was outside uh, across the street. They were shooting at each other. The bullet uh, came over, hit me, went through this, the top of my ear, went through this ear, hit me right there in the back of the head. My God. Look, and this me here. This me here laying up in the hospital in the med. My God, uh, my God, I could have died. The police said you you should be dead. If the bullet would have went over a little bit more, you would have been dead. My God, that's me laying in the bed. This is Channel 13 News interviewing me. I want to assure, I thank God for Thanksgiving. I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave even in 2015 when I got shot. But God, the angel of the Lord encamps around me. My God, and I thank God. Here's a news reporter. That's a news reporter on Channel 13. Uh, interviewing me on I was on the news. You can go on my page and look at it. You can go and look this up, my God. And that's uh, they gave me. Uh, they were talking about me how I got shot. Let me tell you some saints of God. I got to preach like I'm preaching because God been too good to me. Thank God for Thanksgiving. The day is Thanksgiving Day. I'm thanking God for His deliverance. I could have been dead even last year. I, my God, I, I, I ain't got time to tell you about. But like Paul said, I ain't got time to tell you all about it, and I can't. I gotta let you go. But I, uh, the operations, I had three major operations. One last year, when they went into my throat, cut it, went in there, removed two discs, put two human bones in there, got a metal plate holding my head up right now, sent me home. My God, they operated on the 25th, sent me home on the 26th. I developed infection. My neck began to swell up. I couldn't hardly breathe. My, my wife. My evangelist, Kathy Allen, my chocolate chip, rushed me back to the hospital. They took me and put me in ICU. Down, that's on the, that, the, it's 26, put me in ICU. And the next day, the 27, the doctor operated on me again, went back into my throat and removed all that infection that was choking me to death. God is good. Went home that time. I stayed about a week that time. When I went home, I wasn't able to walk by myself. I wasn't able to feed myself. I wasn't able to do anything. I wasn't even able to bathe myself. But my precious wife 
pick me up. Say, come on, in here. Come on, baby. I don't want you to go uh, smelling around here. Look at no, uh, uh, you, 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 my husband took me and put me in the shower, washed me like I was a baby. I thank God, men love your wife. That's why I preach. Men love your wife, even as Christ loved the church and gave Himself for the church as a sweet smelling Savior. Women. Love your husband. If you got a man that really love you and taking care of you in a way that you're supposed to be taken care of and being respected, you all respect that man. Love him. Take care of that man. If he really love you, be by his side. Even when hard times come, be by that man's side. This thing works both ways. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving Day to you. I love all of you that Hit the like button. Thank you for that. I like all of you beautiful peoples. I can't call everybody name the Washington's there. My God, all my friends, all my Facebook family friends. But this is from my heart. I won't. I'm not worried about the likes. I'm not worried. But I thank God for you sending them. Don't get me wrong. But I am just want to get the word out. I want women and men to be delivered, to be set free. Come out. Of, come out. Come out of Egypt. Come on out of Egypt. Jesus died on the cross to bring us out of abundance of sin. We don't have to sin no more. We don't have to sin no more. That's what Chief Apostle Curtis Allen is leaving with you this Thanksgiving day. Come out. You don't have to live in sin no more. Jesus died for your sins and for my sins. Thank God. Love you. Now, y'all have a beautiful day. I'm going to get on up from here. Go in the kitchen. Finish cooking, helping my wife cook dinner. I cooked the hen last night. I cooked the hen last night. I've got to do some more cooking uh, when I get through with y'all. <laughs> God bless you, Ella Dunlap. I see God bless you, Ella Dunlap. All of you talk, Apostle Lockett. God bless your heart. Thank God. Amen. We thank God for Jesus. Thank God for y'all coming in. You that come in late, you can, you can. You can go back and hit it again. You'll see I have a Thanksgiving sermon for you. Be encouraged. I love all of you. For the light has come and you cannot hide. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. God bless you.